Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part seven of my JavaScript video tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to implement form validation. Now, you're absolutely going to have to see the previous two tutorials to this to understand this completely. In the last tutorial, I go over the beginnings of understanding regular expressions inside of JavaScript. And then in the tutorial preceding that, I go over the DOM or the document object model inside of JavaScript because we're going to use both of those to handle form validation. So I'm just going to assume that you've seen both of those tutorials and I'm going to jump right into it. And if you want to see what this code's actually going to look like after I get it done in this tutorial, let's come up here to the name section and let's say that they didn't enter a name. It's going to pop up in an error message, as you can see right there. And you can see it popped up an error message in the street area. And it's going to use regular expressions to validate that all of this information is entered properly. And you can see here with state code, I'm going to put KL, which is not a real state. Error message pops up. And if we put in a valid state code, it's going to disappear. And it's also going to check and allow for you to enter really convoluted, crazy telephone numbers and validate that they are entered correctly, even as they morph into multiple different things. And also validate email. So pretty neat. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create all of the different elements inside of divs that are going to make up my form validation text input boxes. So I just start off with div and then I'm just going to say enter your name and of course I should put all of this inside of a form but to explain form validation I don't really have to do that here because everything else is basically the same. Okay so I'm creating an identification of name for this input box and I'm giving it a name of name and I'm saying that it's going to be a text box and it's going to have a default size of 30. Then what I'm going to define is on blur or whenever the user of this interface leaves the text box, meaning they clicked into it and then they clicked out of it, I want this function to be called is the field empty. And using this, I'm going to pass the identification number for the whatever is contained within this ID box. And then I'm also using get element by ID. I'm creating a child inside of here that is going to be called name help. And if they do not fill out the information in this text box properly, I am going to then input an error message into a span. And a span is like an inline div, and an inline element means that it does not force a line break after it is triggered. See, name help name help. So that's what I'm passing here. I'm passing the ID for the text box I'm creating here. And then down here, I'm passing the identification number for this span that I'm creating right inside of here. And I'm not going to put anything in the help box. I could if I wanted to, but I've decided I don't want to. And then, of course, I need to close the div that I created. And now, basically, I can just copy this. I'm going to show you the regular expressions behind a bunch of different things. Like, for example, street address. And then I'm just going to change this to street. And then change that to street. I'm going to leave that the same. And I'm going to leave the size 30. Remember, it's not the maximum size. It's just the size of the text box on the screen. And here... I'm going to call a different function called is address OK. And here I can leave these the same, except for changing the identification ID for these different things. I'm also going to accept a city, and I'm going to give it the identification city and the name city. Everything else is going to be the same, except I'm going to put city help. I'm actually going to call the same thing as I called for the name. And no, I would never use this for pure form validation. I would always do my form validation using PHP. And the reason why, as I documented in my PHP tutorial, it is extremely easy to get in between the browser and the server and change any of these values using what's called an intercepting proxy which I talk about in length in that tutorial, the PHP tutorial. So if you want to see more about how dangerous some of this stuff can get, if you don't do validation with PHP, check out that tutorial. And I'm also going to accept a state. And for state, I'm only going to leave space for two characters. I'm also going to show you the regular expression that goes into getting a phone number. We're checking that a phone number is properly entered. Kind of complicated, but you'll understand it by the end, especially if you saw the last tutorial. And I'm just doing the same thing over and over again. I'm calling a different function, but I'm passing the identification number for the text box as well as where I potentially am going to print out an error message if they don't in input the information properly. I'm also going to ask them for an email. 
And that's it. Yeah, for your little ODs, you can see they popped up over here on the side of the screen. And what's going to happen is if they enter the information improperly in the span, it's actually next to this text box, but it's going to show up underneath here. It's going to print out an error message if they didn't fill the information improperly. But first, we have to create those functions. And I'm going to do that up inside of here in the script area. Now, the first function I'm going to create inside of here is going to be the most complicated one. But you saw it two tutorials ago whenever I went over the DOM. And what is it is going to accept is a regular expression that is passed to it. Input is going to represent the information that was actually typed into the text box. Help ID is going to be the ID for the span if I want to print a help message in it. And help message is actually going to be the message that gets printed inside of it if they make an error. Then what I'm going to do is run a regular expression using test. And here I'm specifically testing if the wrong information was entered. Then what I'm going to do is inside of this if help ID is not equal to null. What that means is that there's no value in the span where I'm going to print that information. Wow. What I'm going to do is I'm going to delete everything that could potentially be in that span, even if it's multiple child elements. So what this is going to do is, let's say somebody clicks in the street address and they click out and it's going to put an error message in that span that's going to tell them, please enter a proper street address. Well, without this, it would continually print that. So if they clicked in there again and then clicked out, it would print another error message right next to it and create two children inside of that div. So what this guy's doing is it's deleting all of those potential children that could be created inside of there. This is exactly the same technique I used two tutorials ago. So what that's doing is removing all of the children elements that exist in there until there are none left. That's it. Now that that span is empty, I can append or add another child element to it, which is going to be the error message that I want to be displayed. And it's going to be whatever help message they told me they want printed inside of there. And I'm going to say return false. And I'm going to close that off. Else. I'm going to scroll this up. And then if the information was entered correctly, I want to call and delete any error messages that might show up inside of it. And I'm doing that in exactly the same way. I'm saying while there is information inside of it, keep deleting it until everything is gone. Because an error no longer is occurring. Return true. Close off that statement. Close off that statement. And there is the edit node text guy. Basically what it's doing is checking to see if the text that they entered over here in these boxes is equal to the regular expression I defined. If it is, it eliminates any help or error messages that pop up. And if there is an error in the text that they entered, it creates one. And along the way, as it's creating these guys, it's also deleting any help text that's no longer needed. So I'm going to create the function again, is field empty. And this is about the most basic type of form validation you could use. And again, it's just accepting the identification for this box right here, and also here accepting the identification for the span that doesn't exist over here right now. And basically, I'm just going to receive that, and it's going to pass it up to edit node text. And the basic format here is I'm going to put a caret inside of here, and then I'm going to say that I will allow them to enter uppercase letters or lowercase letters. And also I'm going to allow them to enter periods, quotes, spaces, dashes, and I'm going to allow them to enter 2 to 15 of those. And then I'll we'll have a space, and potentially that space will not be needed, so I'm going to put a question mark inside of there. Like I said, this is like the most basic of basic of basic things, but I'm just showing it to you just to show you what basic looks like. And I'm actually just going to copy this. And this, for, to a certain extent, is going to be for people that have multiple names, you know, like Mary, Louise, Dreyfus, or whatever. And I'm going to close that off. Please enter a valid name. And then that's all that function is going to do. I'm going to send that regular expression over along with the value that they put in there, the identification number for the span, and the error message that we want printed if the regular expression does not come back true for the value that they entered. And then function is input field, help ID. I'm going to trust that you know what all those mean now. And with this regular expression with the caret, I'm going to say that that's going to define the beginning of the information they entered. And then here I'm saying that I will accept uppercase or lowercase letters, numbers, periods, I'm backslashing them, spaces, or dashes. And I'm going to accept between 5 to 30 of those. Don't worry, the next regular expression is going to be complicated. And then I'm going to expect the string to end at that point in time. 
And then I'm going to close that off. Is state. This is going to be a little bit more complicated. Again, value entered and the error or help message you want displayed. And here I'm going to say that I expect the string to begin. And if it has an A as the first letter after the beginning, I want it to then be followed by a L, K, S, Z, R, A, E, or P. Those are all the valid potential state codes. So that's what that means if you'd ever need to do that. Then I'm going to say that I also, if they enter a C as the first value, I want the C to be followed by an A, an O, or a T. And if they enter a D as the first column, I want that followed by an E or a C. And I'm going to continue, but I'm not going to type all those out and bore you to death. Okay, and there's the last couple with W. And I'm going to put the delimiter inside of there, the value that they entered. The help message. The help ID is the ID for the span. I was about ready to type in uppercase, but what I'm going to do instead is come back here and put an I there. And that's going to allow them to put uppercase or lowercase. And that's that. Now I'm going to go through an even more complicated regular expression. I'm going to show you how to pick an extremely complicated telephone number or match for complicated telephone numbers that are entered. Okay. So here's a complicated regular expression. I'm going to say what they're going to enter, beginning with the beginning of what they send. And I'm putting this little brace inside of here, this parentheses, so that I can later on designate that it's not important that they enter it. Just stick with me, you understand. Okay, what I'm saying here is that they can enter a number between 0 to 9, which could then be followed either by a space or a dash, but they don't have to. See, this is negating, this question mark is negating this. It's also saying there can be one of these or they can be none of these. All right, so that's what's going on there. Then what I'm going to do, and this, remember I said you understand a minute, this and this are saying here that we're going to negate the fact that they even enter a telephone number. And what this is, is right here. If they would enter something like one dash, 412, we're saying that's valid. But I'm also later on going to say it's valid for them to say, to type that in. But I'm also, this regular expression is going to allow them to just type that in. Okay, so just stick with me here. Then I'm going to say that I want a parentheses to potentially be entered. So that's why I'm backslashing that out. But they don't have to enter that. And then I expect 0 to 9 in numbers, 3 in length. And that's all I'm accepting. And then closing parentheses. But again, we don't need that. So I'm going to put the question mark in there. Or I'm going to say that I expect a number 0 to 9, 3 in length, parentheses. And then it's followed by a space or a dash. But they don't have to enter them again. And then followed by a number 0 through 9, 3 in length, followed by a space or a dash. But again, they don't have to enter that. And then a number 0 through 9. And then just to jump to the end of it here, this 0 to 9 is going to be 4 digits in length. Or I'm going to allow them to enter up to 7 letters or digits. So that's basically going to allow them to enter just a basic number. So if they just typed in their number, 4, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, I'm going to say that that's legitimate and I'm going to allow them to enter that. So that's what that means. And then I'm going to put in the same information we did before. And we're actually almost done. Here, I'm going to validate the email. Say the string is going to begin with A through Z, uppercase or lower, a dot, an underscore, or a dash, followed by, at symbol, followed by, A through Z, upper or lower, 0 through 9, dot, dash, followed by, backslash, the dot, because it stands for any character that is not a new line, in the regular expression definitions, to foreign length. If you understand that, you understand a lot about regular expressions. And there we go, we created the whole entire thing inside of here. And if I file save that, you can see here, if I click inside of one of these boxes and then click out, see, please enter a valid name shows up. If I click in the street area, enter a street pops up, city, and you can see all the error messages popping up on the screen as I do not properly fill out the information. And if I reload that, you can also see here. And if I enter, let's say, a single name, it's expecting me to add at least two names, so I shall. And now the error message doesn't show up. One, two, three, main. And it doesn't show up. However, if I would come in here and just put one, two, three, you can see that that error message pops up. Now let's come down to the state code area and let's say HK, which there is no such state code. You can see that error message pops up. However, I can put in something really crazy for the telephone number and you can see an error message did not pop up. And even though 
I just chopped that out, it didn't pop up again, and so forth and so on. So there is a really complicated form validation tool. All the codes available on my website, of course, it's all free. There's a link in the underbar. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Till next time.